Rebuilding a model steam plant, part four. The planning stage is very important before starting any kind of rebuild and in this episode I will try to show a few examples of the layout of the steam plant and component options that are available. And by component options I mean components that I already have. A Stuart S50 steam engine which is bright yellow and also a black number 10 and these were the original engines fitted to this plant. This clip shows everything removed from the baseboard except the mounting plinths for the engine and the generator. The engines are still not mounted in this clip, but the really nice water tower, the boiler, and this strange thing that holds the gas tank are in place where they were originally. This is a very large baseboard, measuring 28 and a half inches long by 18 inches wide. The metric measurements are on screen at the moment, and also the baseboard is quite deep which makes it look even bigger. To be honest, I would like to use this Stuart 501 boiler, because it will provide more than enough steam to run a Stuart S50 and a Stuart 10, and to be honest, at least one more engine and possibly a larger one. Here is an example, it's a Stuart beam engine. Here it is running on compressed air at a very low pressure. I have run this engine quite a few times using steam, and it uses hardly any at this speed. I really do think that a 501 boiler would be perfectly fine for this application. What's left of the steam plant is currently sat at the end of the bench. It's time to move it into full view. And here it comes. In this position, it's much easier to see the physical size of it. And by having the beam engine in the same shot, you can see the scale. In this clip, the beam engine does look a bit small. That's because it's sat on the bench and it's lower down. I'll change the camera's position so the beam engine isn't quite as much in the shot. If I'm going to throw this beam engine into the mix along with the S50 and the number 10, then I need somewhere to put it. Here is the Stuart beam engine sat on its own plinth on the bench, and next to it sat on the bench itself is the Stuart S50. I've just removed the steam inlet piping and tap to the beam engine, and to see how I can fit the beam engine onto the big baseboard, I need to remove it from the small one. There are six mountings for a Stuart beam engine, two at each end of the main box bed, and two on the pedestal. That's the part that supports the outer main bearing, and it's only held to the pedestal using two 2BA bolts with corresponding washers and nuts. Look at this for manual independence and multitasking, using both hands at once. And in no time at all, the fixings are on the bench. This beam engine has been bolted to this mahogany plinth for a while, and the green stuff that I'm wiping away is the residue of the steam oil, because I have steamed this on several occasions. As a solvent, I'm actually using lacquer thinner or cellulose thinners, but it's better to use white spirit, which won't attack the varnish. Back to the large baseboard now, and as you can see, there are some marks on the side. These were caused when the baseboard was packaged up and sent to me from the USA. The copious amounts of bubble wrap was secured to this baseboard using some sort of duct tape, and as we all know, duct tape leaves a residue, and it can often pull the paint and varnish off. But in this case, I don't think it's attacked the varnish, and it should be easy to remove. On this baseboard are some drillings, and the larger ones are designed to hold some metal caps to catch condensate and oil from the engines. I need to remove the caps from these holes so I can fit the beam engine over the top of the holes so they don't show. At this stage I'm doing nothing at all that is permanent. These are just loose test fits to see what it could look like. What I'm doing here though is reversing the position of the Stuart S50. There was an extra flywheel fitted to the S50. It was a small Mamod flywheel which was driving the generator. And one of the first things that I did when I received these parts from the USA was dispense with the Mamod flywheel. I didn't really see the point of fitting a second, smaller flywheel to drive the generator. For one thing, the number 10 would have to run much faster to generate the electricity at the voltage required. In this clip, I'm using a long screwdriver to just check the alignment of the pulley and the flywheel, and the good news is, it aligns perfectly. Here's a shot of the number 10 and part of the beam engine looking over the top of the Stuart 501 boiler, which is currently sat on the baseboard. From this angle it looks OK too. I'm going to have to make a decision as to whether I use the 501 boiler or the 504 boiler. 
From a size point of view, I think the 501 boiler will do the job perfectly. There will need to be an exhaust condenser fitted, and that will sit on those pieces of wood just behind the boiler. I will make an exhaust condenser, which will not be clad in wood like the water tower. Instead, it will be painted satin black to match the boiler. Not forgetting that this 501 boiler's end plates are not painted. Here's a comparison. This is the 501 boiler, and this is the 504 boiler. It's a good bit bigger, and if anything, I'm starting to think it's too big. So while I'm thinking about that, I'll remove the mess on the side of the wood caused by the sticky tape. But it might be a good idea to remove the sticky tape first. This is like duct tape, but it's made from paper. And as you can see, when it was peeled off, a lot of the adhesive was left stuck to the wood. But thankfully, this was very easy to remove. I used an ecologically sound, non-plastic, flushable wipe. Just moistened with a bit of lacquer thinner or cellulose thinners. There's still a mark on the wood at the top left hand corner, but that is for a fitting. The marks are just two small drilled holes. This part is a bit of a mess. The original very small exhaust condenser was just stuck to the wood. But it's not stuck to the wood anymore, all that's left is a bit of a mess. And here I'm scraping off the adhesive using a sharp blade. By changing the image showing me scraping off the adhesive, you can see what a difference it makes with a 504 boiler with that really huge container next to the water tank. The combination of the 504 boiler and the large plastic tank makes the elevated water tank and the three engines look too small. Here I'm very carefully giving them a bit of a run, particularly the beam engine because the pedestal isn't fastened down, hence the slight knock. This is quite a good layout. If you look at it from the front, you have a number 10, an S50 and a beam engine and the flywheels go up in size with each engine. I definitely need to look at the slide valve on this number 10, it's not making the right noise. Although since I set the timing, it's a lot better than it was when I first got it. The problem is that the noise I can hear is steam being blown to exhaust before it does any work. I'll slow down the video to a quarter normal speed and you can hear it better. At this speed you can clearly hear that the engine is very wheezy. Something is not quite right and I'll look at that in due course. I've left the 504 in place just to try and convince myself that this is the option to go for. I'll need to make an inlet for the steam exhaust pipe. Now I'm asking myself, do I really need a steam plant this big? What is its function going to be? Where am I going to keep it? I hear the term museum quality banded about, particularly by people trying to sell horrible steam engines on eBay. These engines are definitely not museum quality. They are miniature working models, but they are not scale models. The water tank is a really nice thing, but it's more representative of what you would see on an American railroad, maybe something from a Casey Jones episode. In this clip, at this angle, you really can see that the 504 boiler is too big. And once again, this plastic gas tank holder thing is no good at all, and it's not going anywhere near the plant. I think the engines look okay like this. And once they're connected to the boiler, via some sort of a control turret and lots of neat piping, the plant would look quite good. After this episode, I'm going to mothball this series for a short period, because I have far too much work. I'm really not complaining, but if I get too much work, I will stall, and then it will be difficult to continue. The other day, I received what looked like an angry comment from a keyboard warrior type viewer. And he started off by saying, oh, your videos are all over the place and you jump around too much. My answer to this viewer is, yes, I fully agree with you. And why is that, you may be asking? Well, two reasons. I have found by experience that if I continue with one series, the number of views decreases. And that's why I will stop a series and move on to something else for a while. And the other reason is something I've had since birth. It's a mental defect. My father used to call me grasshopper because I used to hop from subject to subject. I'm probably on some sort of spectrum, but I don't care because I like being this way.
And to be honest, I don't think I could do what I do if my brain wasn't a bit wrong. What I would like to say to this viewer who commented is, please do not bother in future, you are blocked. And if you're struggling to find my videos, maybe you should listen to what I'm saying over the end graphic. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.